Hey yo! Ugh, this has been a while, huh? I guess it doesn't matter that much since not that many people care about it. But um, this is another part of computer security with Xeno. So many people have a Gmail account. Now, what this is, is very convenient, web browser specific. Um, it exists in a web browser space. And that's not great if you don't want to be tracked. If you don't want, uh, you know, a large corporate entity or governments uh, knowing what you do. And that's not just uh, reading your email. That is, if you're signed into Gmail here, then when you go to Amazon or whatever, it doesn't matter that you're not logged into Amazon. Um, Google will have uh, tracking cookies that will work with Amazon so that they will both know uh, what you're doing to cut that off at the pass and still have access to your email and also have uh, access to end-to-end -end encryption, I suggest uh, going to Thunderbird. Uh, Thunderbird is a separate program that does not communicate with your web browser. So when you log into it, um, these things are going to be uh, not given the <laughs> specific information um, that they would get were you to log in like this. I'm, I'm trying to dumb this down a little bit. But uh, if you go to Thunderbird, it's thunderbird.net, and I'm going to show you a little bit how we set it up. I already have it installed here. So... There we go. So it's just going to give you like a really quick account setup. We're going to do uh, XDE. Um, let's see. So you can use any email address and uh, whatever password. So, I'm gonna say done. Um, so yeah, you can do a Gmail account, you can do any other email account here. Hit done, and then it's gonna actually prompt you to go to um, Google. And Google's gonna wanna verify that this application has the rights to actually uh, read, edit, and uh, change your account, which is a good thing. So, same password. I'm gonna get my fucking code. This slows you down. It's a good thing that it slows you down. And now, um, Thunderbird wants to access your Google account, see internet entry, blah, 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 blah. Edit, download, permanently delete your contacts, see, edit, share, permanently delete, blah, 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 blah. Read, edit, compose, blah, 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 blah. And we're going to say allow. Um, this is a good thing that Google does. Um, it's good that they do that. Um, so we're going to set this as default. That's fine. Now, what we can do. Um, right off the bat is I want to set up encrypted email and that sounds very daunting um, a lot of people are curious about it and a lot of people don't really know how it works and it's been just the bane of, uh, of <laughs> crypto punks um, whole lives that it, this 
we need to make it easier. And Thunderbird actually made this very easy. So we're going to do end-to-end -end encryption. You click right here under, sorry, I, I guess I jumped through that. So what you're going to do, your primary account or whatever account you want, you can have several. Go to account settings. And then you're going to go to end-to-end -end encryption. Um, Thunderbird doesn't have a personal open PGP key for Xeno Danger Evil. So we can add a key and we can either import it if you already have one uh, from a file. And I do already have one, but I'm just, I'm fucking around with this. So we're going to create a new key and this is a new um, encryption key. They're very easy to create. Um, let's continue. You can say that the key will expire in, you know, uh, one month. Um, you can say that it expires never. So if this is a computer that like, if you just want to play around with, uh, you can do like, you know, one day and that's fine. The key size, you generally want the higher key size. Um, aside from that, like, doesn't really matter. Um, so this key, I'm going to say, is it going to expire in one day? Um, I already have a key for this account on a different um, username. But uh, just to show you how easy this is. Boop. I'm going to generate it. Um, it. It's a very cryptographically, mathematically um, hard process. So it may take a little bit. Your computer may chug. It should. Um, the harder your computer chugs here means that it's going to be more hard for other people to um, crack that encryption and see um, what you're saying to your best buds. So now uh, we have this key. Expires on 1120. Yeah, that's tomorrow. And we can publish the key to a key server, uh, which you should do so that other people have access to it. But I already have a key for this account on the server, so that would that would be weird. So I'm not going to publish this. Um, what's useful here? You want to attach my public key when adding a digital signature, and that way um, there will be a um, attachment to everything you send out with a public key, so that anyone on the planet can send you an encrypted message. They don't need to know anything about you. But if they have your public key, they can send you something completely encrypted. And that's awesome. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to write a new message to... And we're going to say... Test. Now, there's a button here that says encrypt. Um, its default is on, at least for me. You can choose not to encrypt. I'm going to encrypt. I have this public key. Um, and I sent it. Now, that other account is going to get this encrypted. So, someone that thinks that, uh, you know, Xeno Danger Evil is sending something terrible to uh, my other email account will not be able to see what that was, even though it was a completely blank email. We can do this with each other, too. Um, if you go to your account settings and you do this, if you publish your public key, that means that anyone else can send you um, encrypted things. And the more people that do it, um, the better our encrypted security goes. Now, after doing this, like after setting this up, there are some other settings that I implore you um, to use with Thunderbird. You have to accept cookies 
Thunderbird has like a mini web browser in it, and that's terrible. But in order for Gmail or a you know, Hotmail or anyone else to be able to verify your email address, they need to actually use that. So now that we've set this up, we can move to DuckDuckGo. Okay, we don't want to view attachments in line. We don't want to automatically mark messages as read because that actually is a uh, information leak. Automatically install updates. Yes. Connection, offline, disk space, indexing. Uh, sure. Privacy and security. This is going to be like the main one. So don't remember websites I visited. Don't accept cookies from sites. Also, send websites do not track. Um, for one, it shouldn't be sending anything to websites. But if it does, it will tell them, hey, back the fuck off. Um, use a primary password. And now, if you save passwords for multiple email addresses, you'll have a master password. You want this to be very long. You want this to be something that you can remember. Um, because it's basically going to be uh, encrypting your other passwords for your other accounts. And if your computer gets compromised, you want this to be difficult to, to figure out. So, you know, don't make it your pet's name. Don't make it your birthday. Um, I generally do not allow Thunderbird to learn anything about me. Um, scam detection is pretty good. Um, we can allow antivirus, that's fine. And then and add encryption. Automatically enable an encryption when possible. Yes. So that means if you have someone's public key, when you send them an email, it will automatically use that public key to encrypt the email that you send. Now, I've really been focusing on um, the benefits of or not the benefits, but how to use an end encryption with Thunderbird. But even if you don't use that, Thunderbird is a better way to do things because this is accessing your email. Your web browser is accessing your websites. Um, it's good to separate those. Um, Google, uh, Apple, Amazon, all these companies are fully funded by advertisements and the more information they can get about you means they can sell that information to their advertisers. You don't have to do that. Um, also, governments, uh, wherever you are, can go to these companies and implore them to give those governments all the information they have about you and it again it doesn't matter what stripe or color or type of person you are um, that can be terrifying and governments should not be able to just harvest this information about us and each other so if you put a little roadblock in there it makes it harder for them to do it um, I'm not saying that you have to do this if you're doing anything wrong, obviously. Um, but who knows who thinks what is wrong? <laughs> because governments can change, and the people that run those governments can decide what's wrong. Um, and uh, it may be very, very different than what we used to think was wrong. Um, it happens real slow and then it happens real quick. So it's best to just uh, keep your shit tight. And that's, <laughs> I hope this, uh, I hope this is helpful.